Hi everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and this is a game that I played just now. And I was the Free Peoples, and my opponent was Dmang17, and they played Shadow. We decided in advance that the Free Peoples player would have one action token. I think that two is probably more balanced, but I'd be curious to hear your thoughts if you've played with the action tokens, the ones that give you either a free card draw or you get to muster one nation toward war curious if you've played with those and if you prefer if you think the game is most balanced with one or two for the base game in any case i chose to take the card draw token and my opponent allocated one eye rolled no additional eyes and i ended up with this roll obviously i would like to see more character dice if my opponent only has a single eye and I certainly considered the possibility of using a ring to get a second movement, but we can see how things go. I'm happy to see Kyrdan's ships early on. That lets me protect Dol Amroth as soon as I get the elves to war. And since I rolled two musters, it seems reasonably likely I'm going to get the elves to war. And Mithrakot and Sting is obviously a very powerful card. It's a little early to draw it, but I'm happy to see it still, even if I can't play it right away. And just to be clear for anybody who's not familiar, I, I could play it. It is possible for me to play it, but it's riskier to play it early because then Shadow has two different tools to get rid of it. One is Worn with Sorrow and Toil, which often people forget, but you can use Worn with Sorrow and Toil to get rid of a character card on the table. And the second one is Nazgul Strike. So neither of those cards tend to work once you're in Mordor, worn with sorrow and toil, because you typically won't have non-Hobbit companions by the time you get very far in Mordor, and Nazgul Strike just doesn't work at all once you're in Mordor. So my plan is to hold this for quite some time and then play it when I get close to Mordor. All right, let's see how the game starts. My opponent uh, goes ahead and musters Isengard, moves some armies in Mordor, and then I go ahead and move. Obviously, it makes sense. If I had a card to play with Gandalf, then I would have played them. Neither of these I want to play right now. And I want to save this single card draw token for when I'm about to get into Mordor to foil things like Cruel Weather or Nazgul Strike or any of the tile drawing cards. So, you know, I, I think that that's one of the reasons why giving the Free People's Player two tokens is useful because at this point, like this is exactly the moment where if I had two tokens, I would have used this card draw token to, to draw a card. And then I would have been able to use this Palantir for something useful. So, all right, but I move and my opponent hits me with a six and then draws a three. So, you know, obviously I don't want to get hit early on in the game like this but if something's going to come up maybe a three isn't that bad i can lose gandalf i didn't have a card that i wanted to play anyway and then hopefully next turn i can roll with will of the west and getting a turn two gandalf will will certainly allow me to put up more of a defense keep the fellowship going all of that so you know obviously not great but worse to get revealed so could have been worse all right so i lose gandalf and then my opponent starts to draw strategy cards you know, I think that's, let's see what they had. So they had Shadow Lengthens and they had Foul Thing from the Deep. So, yeah, I mean, I think I think that's reasonable. Um, one of the things you can do if you intend to attack up north in, in Do is you can get an army to Dagorlad. And then if you have Shadow Lengthens, you can move the army from... Daggerlad into South Rune, and then the army from South Rune into North Rune. And we don't check for too many armies in a region until the end of the action. So you can temporarily have 14 units in South Rune and then move the South Runes and Easterlings up to North Rune. And, and that's just, it accelerates. It's actually, if you, if you count from Daggerlad, to count up to Erebor, it's one, two, three, four through Dale, five to Erebor. And if you count th through South Rune, it's one Ash Mountains, two South Rune, three East Rune, four 
Iron Hills, five Erebor. So it's actually the same distance from Dagorlad to Erebor if you go due north or if you go sort of this crazy uh, reverse C-shape detour. And because Shadow had Shadow Lengthens actually as their first card, which lets them move too, that can often be an effective way to jumpstart. You can get you can get Erebor under siege really fast. It can bring the dwarves to war. You can often take out this unit in Iron Hills before Free People has even had the chance to get it into Erebor. So um, anyway, they drew a strategy card. That was a long diversion, but um, that's that's something to think about. So now they have both they have both army movement cards and foul thing. These are great great starting cards. Okay, I draw a card and I draw Celeborn's Galadrim. Obviously, that's a wonderful card. I love I love seeing this card. Um, you know, you can imagine this whole game. If I had had two tokens, what would have happened? Because I would have drawn this card, then I would have been able to play it with a Palantir and drawn two more cards. So, anyway, interesting things. So my opponent gets uh, Saruman, of course, that makes sense. And then I go ahead and play Celeborns. Now I could muster the elves, but. I want to cycle into more strategy cards early on in the game. I want to be able to get scouts so that, you know, if I get a unit into Old Forest Road, it can retreat. I want to get Thranduil's Archers. I want to get King Brand's Men. I want to get Dane Iron Foot's Guard. Any of the three cards that reinforce the North, probably the best way to defend the North, and a variety of other strategy cards, right? There, there are a bunch of useful strategy cards that I'd be happy to draw at this point in the game. So I go ahead and play it. And I draw guards of the Citadel. Fine. You know, I, I don't think my opponent is attacking um, Gondor, but I, I don't know yet. They, they did sort of m make a big army in Gorgoroth, so, so they could. So we'll see. All right. Um, but they move. They move to the north. And, you know, I think that's fine. Perf perfectly good. I'm sad that I don't have any of these muster cards yet, but that's, you know, that's how it goes. Okay. So I go ahead and push the elves one toward war. Now, maybe that was a mistake. You know, it seems like my opponent is going to come up and attack Woodland Realm. And the chances of me getting the elves to war far enough in advance that they will be able to um, put them... Sorry. The chances of me getting the elves to war far enough in advance before this army besieges it is very low. I'm gonna be able, I'm gonna go under siege before I manage to get the elves to war, and therefore the only purpose of that muster probably is to get Kirden's ships going a little bit earlier if I'm worried about that sort of attack. But probably, if I think you know what they're gonna come attack Woodland Realm. And the other thing to notice about this is that now Lorien just isn't that. Uh, juicy of a target and um, Rivendell just isn't that juicy of a target. So one one argument could have been made instead of instead of mustering instead of playing Celeborns, I could have mustered the elves twice. Then at the end of this round they would be one away from war instead of two away from war as they are here. And then at the start of next round, if I got two musters, I could muster once to bring them to war and then muster a second time to get an elite into Woodland Realm. So, and that would work before they get, um, no, that wouldn't work because they can, they, so you'll see on the next action. So they get, they get um, Sauron to war. So what they would be able to do is Wait a second. I can muster. They would move. I can muster. So yeah, that would work actually. Um, so, and and maybe you know again, this is another argument for two tokens. If if I had two tokens, maybe instead of drawing cards, I could have mustered elves towards war really really early if I wanted. If I see this sort of thing. So, I didn't. Maybe this was a mistake. Maybe so. It's amazing, right? This is turn. This is turn one. And already Shadow could have, you know, had some choices about playing Shadow Lengthens around this direction, around the, the western edge, eastern edge of the map. And, and I could have used my two musters to muster the elves twice instead of playing 
Celeborns. So, you know, drawing strategy cards is good. Maybe, you know, upon more reflection, maybe doing that when I don't have Gandalf as guide, is that better or worse? What is that? What does that change? My ability to cycle strategy cards has gone down because I don't have Gandalf. So my chances of getting to the strategy cards I need is lower and therefore maybe I should rely on straight up musters. So mustering elves twice maybe was the right way to go. Yeah. And maybe, maybe my opponent would have been more tempted to come to Lorien and then that would have been a much harder battle because I had Celeborns. So, all right. Well, that's interesting. I hadn't, hadn't really thought about that, but, but that's interesting. Go ahead and share your thoughts in the comments. Would you have on turn one with those two musters, mustered the elves twice or played Celeborns and mustered once as I did or something else entirely? All right. So, um, we go into round two. I draw a kindred of Glorfindel and Ents. You know, I'm happy to see Ents. Hopefully I'm going to roll a Will of the West, but no, I do not roll a Will of the West. So you have about a 50% chance to, to roll a Will of the West on four dice and I fail. So Gandalf is running a little late in my opinion. And um, my opponent gets plenty of good attacks here. So they're going to be coming, coming right along and they're going to be able to get the Witch King right? Like this muster is going to let them get the Witch King. So um, I go ahead and move an army here. And my thinking is I can use Kindred of Glorfindel, advantageous position, and have, you know, some some chance of letting this guy survive into, into Woodland Realm. So, you know, that I, I could buff it up and get the north to war a little faster. I don't know. Maybe maybe this again is a waste. Um okay, but looking back to what happened if I had mustered the elves twice, I would have had one muster to get them to war, but I wouldn't have a second muster to actually get a second unit into woodland realm. So that is the other that is the other risk and knowing that if I roll a will of the west, my first will of the west is probably going to go to get Gandalf. So I think maybe that's one argument against the two muster plan. Just unfortunately, Woodland Realm is going to fall. Shadow's a little too fast. That's just how it goes sometimes. So, okay. So I go ahead and move and I want to get this unit into Erebor. It seems like, you know, these guys are going to be, who, who knows what, but I guess because my opponent moved these, these, this army here and this army here, sorry, this army to the, the Dolgolder army to Eastern Mirkwood to the North and the half of the Golgoroth army to Morinon, I get the sense that they're not actually attacking Gondor right away. Obviously that would be nice for me if they did, but they're not going to. And so my thinking is get this, get this unit from Iron Hills into Erebor to defend against it. I'm, I'm sort of feeling a North attack and all of, all else being equal, I always try and defend the north if I can, because that's just the most likely place for Shadow to attack. All right, so Shadow um, moves a single unit to northern Rovanian and then moves nine units into Dagorlad. So this is pretty straightforward. They're going to be moving. They got the card. I know that they have the card that lets them move three, and so be it. So... All right, they're going to come in. But what's interesting about that, the way they did it, is that they used up their muster. So I think if they had spent two dice to do this instead of a single die to do this, they could have used two character dice to do that movement they just did, then use the Palantir to play the move three, and then they would still have two more dice to be able to attack. So what that means is they could attack the unit in <clears throat> Old Forest Road and then they could attack Dale and then with their final die they could muster the Witch King. Now maybe you don't want to be in that situation where you now have you had to attack Dale. So yeah maybe, maybe the reality is you're not getting the Witch King so might as well use it efficiently. Okay maybe they considered all that. All right so I go ahead and move and get missed. And then Shadows Gather, as we expect, 
and then I move a second time. And unfortunately, right here, I get hit. So I get hit and I get revealed. So this is really um, disappointing for for um, the free people. You know, I, there was a decent chance of hitting me, but a relatively low chance of actually getting revealed there. I think something like a one third chance of getting revealed. And you can look at the hunt pool. And so at this point, I think for a while, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and I decide to declare into Moria. Now, this is obviously risky because I'm going to get an extra tile. And then my opponent's going to have another chance to, you know, hunt me on the way out. Um, but I've drawn two tiles and neither of them have been eyes. So, you know, there is some chance there's going to be an eye. And the fellowship, while not super healthy, I do want to stay sort of on an efficient path. And there are a bunch of units in this direction. The other thing is I'm thinking, okay, maybe I can do some, some military attacks. I can get, I can get Gandalf next turn. Maybe I can even get Strider pretty quickly. I mean, Aragorn pretty quickly. I can heal in Lorien for a while. Like I, I don't mind too much taking a little bit of corruption here. So, um, maybe, maybe this is, maybe this is wrong. It's certainly risky to go straight into Moria, but I do. And my opponent draws a zero. So, you know, could be better, could be worse. Obviously would have preferred to see an eye and leave the zero in the pool, but, you know, not too bad. Okay, so um, my opponent attacks Old Forest Road and then plays a strategy card. And so because they played a strategy card, it makes me think, well, they have something, right? Maybe they have Swarm of Bats, maybe they have Great Host, but whatever it is, advantageous position is not going to help me. So I saved the card. Um, they do have an early swarm of bats. That's great for them. And they move into Old Forest Road. And then they go ahead and take Carrick. That makes a lot of sense. North is one away from war. And then they put the uh, Woodland Realm under siege. I'm not sure why Return of the Witch King is still there. That should be gone. And I go ahead and hide. So, you know, it's not great to, to be hidden right in a stronghold because you can get revealed again with a tile drawing card but they're relatively few they're only three out of three out of what is that um 13 three out of 13 tiles that will reveal me and on top of that my opponent has only drawn two character cards so the chances of them having a card that will allow them to draw a tile, either Foul Thing from the Deep, Orc Patrol, or Isildur's Bane is relatively low. I don't know exactly how low, only two cards um, that they've drawn. And then on top of that, three out of 13 drawing a reveal. So I want to get air, I'm going to use Strider's ability to hide, and then I'm going to get ready to move next turn. But um, in fact, my opponent definitely has Foul Thing from the Deep, and they draw one of the 13, three of the, one of the three tiles that they need to reveal me into Moria. So I get my second <clears throat> and I lose uh, Boromir. Um, I wouldn't, you know, obviously losing a Hobbit would have been slightly better there. And I get revealed and then still, you know, there's still four eyes in there, but I get another zero reveal. So could have been better, could have been worse on, on this second tile. So you know, this is definitely going to hurt me when I get to Mordor. You know, you want to have those zeros and ones in the pool so that when Gollum is guiding, these are very pleasant tiles. But instead, I'm getting revealed, getting bonus tiles drawn in, in Moria. So obviously, good job for my opponent waiting until I hide to then try and reveal me. You know, the chances of revealing me were low, but, you know, might as well take your shot and wait for the right moment. So I think that was that was certainly well played and, and well-timed. There was no reason to, to rush that way for me to hide and then take a shot. Okay, so obviously I'm not happy about that, but what can you do? All right, I have Book of Mazarbul, and I think mm, maybe I can get Gandalf in Grey Havens and then play Book of Mazarbul and get him to Ered Luin, which will then allow me to muster in Erebor. So this is, you know, a very good card. Happy to see it at this point in the game. And the other reason, just um, the, the other reason to go through Moria, which is nice, is 
eventually, probably along the way, I'm going to lose some hobbits and then I can drop a hobbit in Fangorn. And, and that's nice because then it lets me activate the Ents while Gandalf is off in Grey Havens or Luin or wherever he needs to be to do what he's doing on the, on the West Coast. So, you know, I, maybe, you know, there's already been two tiles drawn because of Moria. Um, so it's certainly costing me extra corruption. Maybe not worth it. All right. I discard Kindred of Glorfindel because I feel like it's reasonably likely I'll be able to muster into Rivendell if I need to. So I'm not going to worry about it. All right. Gandalf, show up, please. My my opponent allocates two eyes because I am in Moria with a, the stronghold gives a reroll and the orc gives a reroll. So I think it makes a lot of sense to put, put two in. And roll zero. <clears throat> and still no Gandalf. <clears throat> so... You know, that's too bad. And it would have been particularly nice because I could have gotten Erebor to war in time before this army gets there and all that. But but no, not to be. So I hide and I uh, my opponent goes ahead and organizes, gets his, what's he doing? Getting some armies ready. I don't know why this army goes to Dimmeraldale. I mean, I, I guess it's, it's not bad. It, it, prepares, it prepares me... It prepares for next round. Probably I'm only going to move once. It prepares to, to get me there. Okay. So I go ahead and move, and my opponent hits me a third time in four moves. You know, they had about a 50% chance there with, with four dice, and draws a two. So what do you do here? You did not get revealed. Do you take a random companion here? Or do you take the two? Obviously, you don't really want to lose Strider this early, but my feeling is I have to be at least a little risky given how badly the hunt has been going. And if I get a hobbit, maybe my hobbit can start to make his way over to Erdluin, maybe, or maybe this plan is still let the hobbit go to Fangorn, towards Fangorn, and then still put Gandalf in Grey Havens. So... With all that in mind, I take I take a random, um, but I end up losing Legolas. So perfectly perfectly nice result. Really, the only bad result would have been Strider. So I took the risk, and um, that's how it goes. So still not happy with all the tiles that have been drawn. Okay, but I did get um, I did get hit, and now Nazgul search reveals me automatically. So the Nazgul get to move around and the extra Moria tile is a one. So, so far there have been three Moria tiles and each time there were four eyes in the pool, but they were never picked. So, you know, Moria was bad <laughs> for the fellowship. This is, this is going to be a really tough hunt pool by the time I get to Mordor, you know, and, and there's really nothing I can do about it at this point. Um, maybe challenge of the king and get rid of some eyes permanently, but you know I don't have challenge of the king in my hand, and there would be you know some chances that I could destroy Strider that way, or I mean Aragorn that way, and I don't even have a single will of the West to, for for Gandalf. So, you know, this is just I haven't haven't rolled a will of the West first three turns of the game. Don't have don't have Gandalf. It's gonna be it's gonna be a rough rough time. For the fellowship, if we were betting at this point, I would I would certainly bet bet on shadow. So I go ahead and hide, and I you know there was some chance I could have done a hide with the I could have used Strider's ability and then and then left my character die and use the character die to play something like Elf and Rope. Maybe that would have been maybe that would have been better. Um, I like, I like saving the muster. The elves will most likely be at war. I could muster in Lorien. I could possibly use this as an attack into Dimmerdale if I want to. So, um, all right. So my opponent moves more armies, gets everybody well organized into Woodland Realm, plays Worm Tongue in advance of getting the Witch King. Okay. You know, I don't, I don't think it's that useful. Probably my, uh, yeah, I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't seem like it's that useful to play Wormtongue at this point, 
but maybe my inclination would be, especially since the, the fellowship is out and about, I would probably have attacked Woodland Realm once, gotten the Witch King, and then, hmm, yeah, I don't know. With only three cards in my hand, though, I could just I could just draw a card, right? Why not draw a character card or draw a strategy card? Instead, then you'll have four cards in hand, and all right. Anyway, so attack Woodland Realm. A second swarm of bats is interesting, and I decide to play advantageous position here because basically none of these other cards have any any effect. I'm about to draw two more. And I know that Gandalf is just not showing up in time. You know, this this combat's almost certainly going to be done. By the time I get Gandalf, m move to Erebor, muster the dwarves, I'm just, I'm not going to have time to do it all. So th this is this is the drawback of waiting until turn four to, to have your fifth die. It just, it really slows you down. Sometimes that's how it goes, though. I think also, like, all of the the reveals plus the fact that it's only four dice, right? It, if you have only four dice because the fellowship is moving smoothly and you haven't managed to kill off Gandalf yet, then that's one thing because you then have the other dice to do what you need to do. But if you're getting revealed and on top of that, you're, you don't have Gandalf yet. That's, that's sort of a double whammy. Okay. Uh, so that's why I play Book of Mazarbal and my opponent has played their second swarm of bats. Now that's important to note because that means there are no more swarm of bats. My opponent played one in Old Forest Road and one in Woodland Realm. So I need to keep that in mind. That means all of my combat cards are going to work and scouts in particular will be entirely reliable. So it's good to know your opponent only has two swarm of bats. All right. My opponent rolls sixes, which is obviously a good strategy and Woodland Realm falls. I get no hits in return, and eventually Woodland, Woodland Realm falls. So my opponent did two to themselves by pressing twice, and otherwise it's fine. So that, I think, was a good play. And then I go ahead and attack Dimmerald Dale because I am worried about the Fellowship. I'm at three Corruption, and the Hunt Pool is just going to be really nasty by the time I get, by the time I get to Mordor. So that's why I want to give them every help that I can get. So I uh, attack there and I'm not particularly worried about Lorien. It's not like there's a giant mass here and, and a single muster will be fine. So I attack in, I get zero hits. That single orc does hit the elves and uh, I press because why not? And then the orc retreats and you do not have to move anybody in. So I don't move anyone in because I don't really want to weaken Lorien. I'm just happy to content, I'm content to leave Lorien there. You know, one idea might have been to move people out and then try and do some free people military victory stuff, but, you know, it's too early. I only have four dice. It's, I, I don't think, I don't think it really makes sense at this point. It's something to think about. I could have, I could have considered it. It certainly would have made my opponent feel nervous if I had all these four units right there outside of Moria. So... Maybe, maybe worth considering. But I just leave them in Lorien. All right, so my opponent gets the Witch King. That makes total sense. And when whenever I'm Shadow and I can roll nine dice to my opponents, I have nine dice to my opponents, four, I always feel great. So good for them. I drew Athelos, which is obviously a really nice card for me to see at this point. Gives me a lot more hope for the Fellowship. And my opponent gets Day Without Dawn and Breaking. So... That's good. And they allocate two eyes. You know, I I think with no nobody on the fellowship, yeah, maybe. Maybe it's worth it. I, my inclination would be only one. But especially, especially because you know that a shadow, you know that if the free people get a will of the West, they're going to get Gandalf. And that means they're not going to be moving the Fellowship with that Will of the West. So while the Fellowship, while the Free People player does not have Gandalf and they're waiting to roll the Will of the West, then you can, it, it, you might think they're probably going to move a little less, just statistically. 
but I get two wheels of the West and two character dice. So obviously this is, this is a great role at this point. I'm very happy to have these. I have Atlas that I want to play. I have Elven Rope that I can play and, and maybe I could go get, maybe I could go get Strider, right? Like that wouldn't, that wouldn't be too bad, but I'm obviously going to play Atlas before I get Strider. So first things first, move with the fellowship because the Southrons and Easterlings are not at war, so I know I'm safe from Day Without Dawn, and I don't want my opponent moving an army onto here and getting a bunch of extra rerolls. So I'm going to go ahead and move right away, and I'm safe. So, you know, when you're only rolling on sixes, that's reasonable. That's sort of what you'd expect. I had better than 50% chance of, of staying, of not getting hit. All right, so... My opponent starts to move south rounds and easterlings toward war. So obviously I need to think about Day Without Dawn. I don't want to have two Wills of the West out there. Let's go ahead and get Gandalf. So I think it makes sense at this point to get Gandalf in Fangorn because I do have an end card and I did not keep the Book of Mazarbul. Now, you know, looking at this situation, if I showed up at Grey Havens... You know, I just, I don't know. I, I don't think that I, I think it was the right choice to get rid of the Book of Mazarbul. Obviously, it'd be nice if I could have played it last round. That would have been awesome. But um, I didn't get the Will of the West, so I couldn't play it. And now that now that it's turn four and Gandalf is showing up, it's just, I think, too late because my opponent's going to be able to get Erebor under siege this turn. All right. So Gandalf shows up in Fangorn. Southrons and Easterlings are now at war. And I go and play Athelas with the Will of the West, because in case my opponent has Day Without Dawn, I don't really, <clears throat> I don't really want to waste it. Um, I want to let them sit with it in their hand, and I'm not too worried about rolling a whole bunch. And <clears throat> mostly, I'm thinking I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep Strider in the Fellowship because I need to be able to soak up the corruption. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get. Aragorn, and I'm just going to hope that the military defense can last long enough with only five dice per turn. So the other thing to realize is I could have moved, um, I could have tried using this character die to get Strider to Minas Tirith and then crown him with the Will of the West. But one, I'm worried about Day Without Dawn. You know, not super likely that my opponent has it. I mean, they do have it, but, you know, not super likely. Um, and second of all, I want to play Athelos for the for the good effect, right? It's a whole extra point of corruption, effectively, that I save by keeping, by playing it when Strider is guide. So I want to play it before Strider is guide. I mean, before Strider leaves the Fellowship. I'm still open to the possibility of sending Strider down to Minas Tirith, maybe, but I'm sort of thinking, no, not going to happen this game. Okay, so I go play Athlos. I get the average result, which is to heal two. And then my opponent moves to Withered Heath to be able to avoid any sort of scouting issues with Dale, which I think is smart. <clears throat> and then Erebor goes under siege. We, I go ahead and play Elven Rope because I don't, I don't want to move again against only against three dice i mean maybe it makes sense maybe i should have moved right here um i guess my thinking is i want to take it a little bit slow i'm still considering declaring into lorian to to heal even another corruption but i want to play elven rope at some point i'm thinking my opponent's going to have fewer eyes next turn and i'm doing this math so from where I am right now, I need one, one, two, three, four, five movement to get into Mordor. So with Strider as the guide, it's reasonably likely I can get five movement. In fact, the the average number of movement I'm going to get on five dice because I have I'm rolling five dice is two and a half. So I'm sort of perfectly set up on average to make it with with five movement. Um, maybe, maybe it was better to move here. And then, then I would, instead of doing five, which, which means three in a single turn, I could do two this turn two the following turn two the following turn, 
maybe that maybe that would have been a better plan. Yep. So again, this might have this might have been a mistake. Maybe should have maybe need to make make the make the move here, even though it's not that pleasant to move a second time against three eyes. It's probably better than moving uh, the fourth, the uh, the third time in a turn. All right, something to consider. I don't think this is clearly wrong, but okay. So Elven Rope is nice, and then my opponent attacks Dale and defeats it. Okay, fine. So there are three victory points, and then we draw into next turn. So I get scouts. So obviously it's nice to have scouts available for this attack from Fords of Eisen. That's probably the most likely one. Maybe Pilar gear into Dol Amroth if my opponent goes the, the long way. All right, so House of Stewards, completely useless. Have no companions in any useful battle and don't have Boromir. So sometimes you draw useless cards. All right, my opponent gets Balrog. That's good for them. Makes Certainly makes Lorien more feasible, but yeah, without more mustering, it's, it's not that useful. Okay, so maybe actually that's kind of a useless... Fairly useless card. That's interesting. When I attacked into Dimmerald Dale, if they had Balrog, then they could have played it. They could have played it on that attack. I hadn't considered that. So that was a little risky. Um, not, not that those units would have been defeated, but just I could have risked dishing out, been ta taking a bunch of damage and weakening Lorian. But there is weak enough other strat uh, shadow units there. That was, it's probably okay, even against Balrog. Okay, um, so I declare the fellowship into Parth Celebrant, and then my opponent continues to allocate two eyes. So, you know, I think I think that could make sense when the fellowship is under some pressure to keep the pressure up. And I get two wills of the west. Obviously, I should use one right away while Day Without Dawn is still out there. And I know that I want to move, so I move, and my opponent misses even with four dice. Now. The second move obviously is really likely to to hit me, and I'm not going. I'm not going four movement. I mean, I'm not going three moves this turn. So hopefully next turn I'm going to be able to get three moves. We'll see how it goes. So what happens? I guess I move some armies around because what else useful can I do? I need to get these armies ready to go into Helm's Deep for if and when this. Uh, attack from Orthanc comes, and now I know because all of the swarm of bats are gone, I know for sure as long as I have any, basically any non palantir die and any non muster die, I can get um, these units in, because if I only have character dice, for instance, which sometimes happens if I don't roll an army muster, then I can use scouts to go from Fords of Eisen to Westhamnet, and then I can use my character die to move that from Westhamnet to Helm's Deep when my opponent crashes through into Fords of Eisen. So I, uh, my opponent musters into Far Harad, and I go ahead and move a second time. Because I know I want to get into Mordor in two rounds. This is gonna, this is almost certainly gonna hit me, but I need to keep moving the Fellowship. To stay on pace. So my opponent hits and draws a three. Now I could take a random here. There are a bunch of, you know, this is what's left in the hunt pool. My thinking is I want to use Strider efficiently. And if I don't lose him here, then the chances of losing him to a two or a one are higher unless I wait a long time. And I don't really want to wait a long time to get to Gollum. I want to be able to play Mithra Coat and Sting. And to do that, to be safe from Worn with Sorrow and Toil, I can't have companions still in the fellowship. So my thinking is lose Strider here. I'm not revealed. In and then next round, I'm gonna be able to hopefully move twice without getting revealed. And then if I need to use a ring on the third one to get in, if I have to. All right, so I go ahead and take Strider. I'm curious to know if you would have taken a random there instead of losing Strider guaranteed. I wanted to use him efficiently, so that's why I took it. That's why I took it there. 
And then my opponent musters again into Far Harad. I think that is fine. Uh, I certainly feel like Corsairs are coming at some point or who knows what, but it's obviously not going to be not going to be good. And my opponent, let's see, I go ahead and muster Gondor here. So it's a little late. I'm a little worried that Gondor is not going to be able to muster up in time. But I, yeah, I wanted to, I, I wanted to be able to get these armies to west of that because Helm's Deep is almost certainly going to be a target at some point. So that's why I used an army movement while I had the chance. The second one, Muster Gondor. Okay, my opponent plays the second um, movement card, Shadow Lengthens. These guys teleport into Erebor. That's obviously going to be strong. And then these guys teleport all the way to over to Umbar. So I'm expecting Corsairs of Umbar. My opponent does not have Corsairs of Umbar right now. And so part of me thinks maybe they should have just merged up with this near Harad group instead of the Umbar group. It is up to two in each direction. So you could have stopped at near Harad and then with the movement moved to West Harondor. It just gives you an extra elite. Maybe you don't really need that extra elite. Maybe you're going to draw into Corsairs of Umbar, but you still have 18 strategy cards. So your chances, you know, even if you draw two or three or four, still not that great that you're going to draw Corsairs. So the most likely outcome is you're just going to move to West Harondor. And in that case, why not have an extra elite along with for the ride? All right, so I play guards of the Citadel here because what else can I play? There's just nothing else useful to play here. I could play Kyrdin ships right here, but I kind of want to tempt my opponent to, to attack this. I'm thinking next turn I can like muster Gondor one toward war, and then my opponent might rush to play Kyrdin, um, Corsairs of Umbar. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it makes more sense to play Kyrdin ships instead of Guards of the Citadel. Yeah. What, what would you have played here? I didn't want to risk Mithrakot and Sting yet because if I have any hope of surviving Mordor, I'm going to gonna need that. So, yeah, I could have maybe just drawn a strategy card outright. I mean, a, a character card outright, but I think it makes sense to, to play either Guards or, or Kyrdin ships. Okay, so I play guards. Yep. Maybe curtain ships would have been better. And then my opponent attacks Erebor and uh, wins the battle. So, um, oh, interesting. They stopped. No, what's going on? Oh, right. We had we, we drew cards for each other accidentally. They drew they drew cards for me, but they meant to draw for themselves. All right. So they go ahead and win this battle pretty handily they play a couple cards oh and then they they take two for onslaught and then they hit the last two so you know they were they were probably winning that battle either way um but yeah that was that was pretty pretty sad for a free people's player all right clearly i have an extra card to get rid of house of stewards because that's just useless for me and my opponent you know this is this is pretty pleasant Hand of cards. You know, they, they might like to see some red tiles, especially with a pool this small. Having red tiles in there is going to be great for them. I declare into Druid and Forest. My thinking is, even if I lose a random, I can, random Hobbit, I can still get them to Westamnet and then into Fangorn easily enough or into Helm's Deep easily enough. All right, now I'm hoping to roll at least three movement here so I can get to Mordor this turn. My opponent rolls one extra eye. And I do get three movement. So this is this is a good roll for me. We expected over the last two turns that I would get five movement, and I did. So this is about right. Now I am a little worried because if I get revealed, then I don't have Strider's ability. So all right. I move and I'm safe. And then my opponent musters some Nazgul. And I go ahead and move a second time before I get Nazgul on me. So I I get hit here. So, you know, that was a pretty low chance with only two dice on fives. And then on top of that, to reveal me, there were three tiles that didn't, you know, we calculated, I calculated something like one third chance of revealing me here. So bad luck to get revealed. The Hobbit goes to Helm's Deep, probably a mistake there. Again, 
probably Hobbit should have gone maybe to Westham Net. I don't know. I wanted to activate, I wanted to get rid of Wormtongue and activate Rohan because that's just a cool effect. But probably would have been better to put the Hobbit in Westham Net just so I have, uh, I could move them in with a character die if I need to. All right, so my army gets, I get activated there. And I don't know exactly. My opponent wanted to check the rules and they're thinking about playing Breaking the Fellowship or Lure of the Ring. They have two different options. And they decide to play Lure and get um, Gimli. So that is the right choice, I think, particularly because there are so many eyes. There are just so many eyes in the pool. We haven't gotten a single eye. And so breaking is just unlikely to, you know, to do anything. So I think lure is great. And then they did two corruption with lure. So not feeling great about the fellowship. And again, okay, so these armies move out. We have armies now in South Thillian and West Torondor. And, you know, maybe I shouldn't have gone the Minas Tirith route and therefore this army could have been in Daggerlad. And so I don't sort of help them get, uh, help Shadow, you know, activate their armies into South Athelian. But okay, that's pro probably doesn't matter too much. All the thing, yeah, it's, it's minor. But maybe I should have gone to North Athelian. Maybe I shouldn't have even tried to stay nearby. I mean, I did, I am happy that this Hobbit gets to Helm's Deep. So, so I think that is an argument to not have, to not declare in Western Emin Wheel. Yeah, why not? That, that would have been fine. That would have been fine to go there, Western Emin Wheel, and then one uh, Eastern Emin Wheel, Dagger Lad Moranon. That's a fine path. I don't know why I was thinking it had to be Druidan Forest. Yep, mistake. Okay, so should have should have declared into Western Emin Wheel, and then I could have been in Daggerlad, and then this single army would have moved onto onto me in Daggerlad, but it wouldn't have helped activate Shadow's armies, and it wouldn't have um, come with a Nazgul for an extra reroll. So maybe it makes sense to, yeah, I don't know. Okay, let's move on. So my opponent goes ahead and moves Nazgul around and then attacks into Pilar gear, hits, and then I muster. So I have a muster and I muster into Lamadon and a leader into Dol Amroth, knowing that I'm going to play Kyrdan's ships. But at this moment, I'm thinking, oh, I can play scouts into um, Dol Amroth and then I can use a muster at the start of next turn to be able to bring it up to a pretty good sized contingent and then wait until the first round of first combat die and then put in two more elves as a response that all of that logic is flawed because there would only be a single die of combat most likely with three elites right my opponent would would probably press so what i should be thinking here is i'm going to be putting two elites into dol amroth this extra regular yeah, it's fine. It's fine, but then don't don't use scouts to to get it in. Um, all right. So um, my opponent attacks Lamadon, and then I use I use scouts here because it looks so tasty. I'm gonna get a contingent there, but that that was definitely wrong thinking. I should have. I should have saved the scouts. So this is by far my biggest mistake of the whole game because I have a scouts in my hand and I need to make sure that these units in Fords of Eisen survive. And I know they would guaranteed survive. And 
end up at Helm's Deep. I haven't drawn any other Rohan musters yet. Obviously, it'd be great if I draw them at some point. But yeah, this is just this is just a horrible mistake. Especially because I have Kirden's ships. I'm gonna play it. This unit that I'm saving is gonna end up getting wasted. Ah, I don't know why I did that. That was that was a really bad mistake. Okay, so it happened, and then I play Smeagol helps Nice Master. Now I could have moved here. I could have moved into Mordor, and the odds of getting hit would be super high. I would almost certainly get hit. I would almost certainly, maybe not almost certainly, I would have a decent chance of getting revealed. So I decided to wait because I didn't want to give my opponent a ring. It would have let them attack Dol Amroth. And at this point, I'm still thinking, oh, I can muster an elite into Dol Amroth and weather the first uh, die of attack and then um, muster the elves in afterwards. Or I don't know, maybe I was thinking I'd have three elites in there and muster, muster the elves. Um, so I decide to wait and this maybe also is a bad mistake. So I'm curious to know, would you have risked, would you have gone ahead and risked this last, this last movement, this turn and, and basically suffer an additional, an additional tile or would you and possibly two tiles to get into Minus Morgul and end up revealed? Or would you wait around and not have to use a ring? So, yeah, I think, I don't know. It's hard to say. Maybe better to use a ring here. And just and just get get to Mordor if you can. Obviously, I would I would I think I would use the card draw first to make sure that I can't get stalled with something like ah um, oh, man. So on top of that, I would have used the ring. I would have I would have drawn the card, and then my opponent wouldn't have had the ring yet. Ah. Uh, and then, and then I would move. Yeah. So probably should have done that. That would have been better. Okay. I mean, that's why we, that's why we analyze games. So curious to hear your thoughts. Would you use the ring here? You know, obviously this hunt pool is horrible, but I do have, um, Smeagol helps nice master. So, and, and maybe I won't get revealed, right? That's possible. Okay. So, but I don't, instead I sit outside Mordor and wait, and then my opponent musters up in Orthanc, which makes total sense. And I don't have my scouts anymore, and I'm sad about that. All right, so I get a pretty bad roll. I don't, I don't really want, I don't want to see zero muster, and my whole plan was to muster into Dol Amroth. That's why I used scouts there on top of all that. It's just, um, I don't have a lot to do with all of these character results. So... Okay, so my opponent, um, I need to I need to pass long enough to have the same number of dice as my opponent, and then I can use my card draw. So, all right, so my opponent attacks the Lamroth, and then I play Kyrdon Ships. So that whole Gondorian unit that I managed to scout into there was completely useless. Completely useless, and it's going to cost me the game. So... Uh, Saruman recruits up, and then um, my opponent attacks Dol Amroth. I play some defensive cards, but my opponent rolls pretty well and um, plays Great Host and then manages to defeat me. So, you know, it was relatively close. Note that they did play Day Without Dawn, so I'm happy to know that Day Without Dawn is gone. That's always good to notice when that happens. But my opponent wins. And, you know, with that size army, with that amount of leadership, with that many cards to play, um, I think their chances were, were quite good. Maybe it would have taken them more than one die, but their chances were good. Okay, so now my opponent attacks Forts of Eisen. And this is where I'm completely kicking myself for not having the scouts. I really should have it, especially because I don't have an army die 
right? This is exactly the point that I had made before, which is I retreat with scouts to Westham Net and then use the character die to move into Helm's Deep. So what was I thinking? Not thinking. All right. But my opponent gets two sixes. Those guys get defeated and everybody moves in. So my opponent is willing to lose Saruman at this point, which is absolutely correct. Sure, maybe I have an end, but whatever. You can still you can still take Helm's Deep with this. That should be fine. All right, so I have to use a ring here. I hate to give my opponent a ring for this, but I have to, and get these guys in, right? My only hope of surviving is to keep Helm's Deep alive. And I go ahead and retake Pilar Gear. That's going to be a minor inconvenience, but, you know. All right. Um, maybe I can muster up a bunch next turn and go into Dolamroth. Obviously, this would have been, it would if I had not had so many character actions right here and instead had more musters, it'd be great to muster into Pilar Gear. I could muster, muster into Edoras, those sorts of things. All right. So my opponent attacks Helm's Deep and, um, you know, I'm not, not feeling great here. I go ahead and play Ents because I didn't want to deprive my opponent of the leadership from these wargs. And because Gandalf is in Fangorn, I get to play a second card, which is Mithril Coat and Sting. Now at this point, it is safe because Nazgul Strike, my opponent will never have a chance to play Nazgul Strike this game because I know that I'm going to use my card drawing action to avoid anything like Cruel Weather or Nazgul Strike or anything like that. And I know that Worn with Sorrow and Toil cannot hurt me because Hobbits can use their guide ability and not be forced to be taken as a casualty. So um, it is safe at this point to play Mithril Coat and Sting. All right, so my opponent reinforces. That seems good. And then I draw my card. And, you know, mighty attack, okay. It, it could be, could have been worse, I guess. I don't know exactly what I was hoping for there. I mean, heroic death would have been good. I was also uh, looking for something like um, Guahir or We Prove the Swifter to be able to get um, Gandalf in there. So... All right, so my opponent draws a strategy card here. I think that makes sense. Seems fine. And they do have Shelob's Lair. It's a little strange to me. I, I would, yeah, I think I would have played Shelob's Lair there, actually, if I had that in hand. Because I can tell that, you know, my opponent, uh, Free People, is going to move into, you know, one movement. And then at the start of next turn, they'll probably be hidden. They, I probably won't catch them. I, only, I have to roll a six. And even if I do roll a six, I have to, on top of that, get, you know, one of these eyes. So almost certainly the free people is going to be hidden at the start of next round. So better to play Shelob's there and then it's in the pool from the beginning. So, but I don't know. I guess they're not really worried about the fellowship destroying the ring. Yeah, I mean, that's probably reasonable. Okay. So... I don't have anything else useful to do. I have a, comp like, I normally would not play Bilbo's song here, but I don't have anything else I can do. I've already used a ring um, and I have nothing else. So I play Bilbo's song. Would have preferred a muster or something like that. And then my opponent tries to play Fighting Urkai. Good to remember, you can't play that if Saruman's dead. So that that is a, that is a drawback. And um, they just attack normally. So... You know, I think it's good to win the game. Makes sense. If they win this battle, they just win the game. So that's cool. I am happy to have this Hobbit in here. So Mary is doing some serious good work because um, I can play Mighty Attack and probably some other stuff. So they play Desperate Battle. We really don't have a very desperate battle at all. We All of us miss entirely. And Mary hits automatically with... His mighty attack. So I do one damage. My opponent presses once and then plays Onslaught as the combat effect. Okay. Um, but manages to get no hits and I get two hits. So this is their army now. It's, you know, notably weaker. I'm not sure that I would do much Onslaught. They decide to do one and they get one hit. So that's good. 
for them, but then they stop here. So it's fine. You know, I, I, I think, and then I get into, oh, and then I move, right? And then my last action is to get in. I don't think they really need to worry about this. It's fine. Next turn, they're going to be able to move Nazgul and attack in there. No problem. All right. So I get hit moving into Mordor. Obviously, that's very bad. Um, and an eye finally shows up and reveals me. And then even though there's a 50% chance of getting a second eye, I get the two. So the the hunt has been just quite quite brutal here and you know even by waiting a whole round i waited a whole round to get into mordor to avoid exactly this from happening so shouldn't have waited right just absolutely should not have waited i i gave shadow a whole extra round and instead of you know, those three, those three character dice or those four character dice, if I had been in Mordor would have been, would have been great. So, you know, obviously the chances of getting revealed here were low. Um, the chances of getting hit at all were, were relatively low, but you still might get hit. So I think it's a good lesson in, if you have a chance to get into Mordor, then do it basically unless shadow is going super slow but they weren't going super slow so should have should have moved in that last round and now getting in i end up getting caught anyway so a couple of bad mistakes that scouts was a bad mistake and not moving in to mortar when i had the chance last round was i think a pretty bad mistake all right so i'm at two corruption now going into mordor revealed obviously not great now i draw two awesome cards Right, like these are almost certainly the best cards that I could draw right here. Riders of Theoden is the single Rohan muster card that lets you muster in a siege only if you have a companion. So because I have um, Mary here, I'm going to be able to use Riders of Theoden because it says one leader, um, one Rohan unit and leader in Edoras or in a Rohan region containing a companion. So... That's awesome, right? Now I have a real chance of surviving here. And with We Prove the Swifter, when when the Witch King shows up to give some leadership, I can move Gandalf in. So there we go. Um, this is a perfectly good role. I'm happy to be able to draw some character cards and play cards and hide the fellowship and all that. So I start by playing Riders Theoden because I'm worried about something like the Nazgul are abroad or the Witch King commands the, like a card that lets my opponent move and attack in a single action. And I just, I want to make sure I need, I need Helm's Deep to hold. So that's why I play it first. If my opponent has something nasty that hurts the fellowship when they're revealed, that's bad, but I can't, I can't sort of risk it. So my opponent draws a strategy card here. I think that makes sense. That's interesting. They had Give It To Us and She Loves Lair. So they could have played one of those. I guess they're just not worried about... They're not worried about the Fellowship. I mean, yeah, chances of destroying the ring are pretty low. Um, certainly not happening this turn. You know, if I get a negative one and, uh, you know, one or three, like, I could. You know, the two, the two reveal is bad, but if I go, like, two reveal and then negative one... Like that, that would be, I would be in, you know, some decent chance, some chances of, of destroying it. And I do have Mithril Cone Stink. So my inclination is, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you draw the strategy card just because you need the strategy cards to win this battle. And that's really what's going to win the game. Yeah. That's interesting. All right. So I hide and then they play Shelob's Lair. So again, had they played Shelob's Lair all the way back, you know, last round, then they wouldn't have to deal with this here. I, yeah, I mean, I should have been in Mortar long ago, should have been able to, should have been hidden, blah, blah, blah. That, you know, that's that's how it goes. Sometimes the hunt goes against you. So Shelob is in there, and I go ahead and draw another character card here. Why did I do that? I think my thinking was I need to be prepared 
to get Gandalf in there. I'm happy to see a daring defiance with with Mary. All right, so my opponent moves armies around. They're going to have to take Pilar gear. That makes sense. And then uh, Pilar gear falls. And then I draw again. That could have also been a mistake. So I think maybe I just pass there or maybe I... Maybe I move once with the fellowship. I think I want to save that Palantir to be able to move Gandalf in when all the Nazgul show up. So I think I think that card, that extra card draw was probably a mistake. Um so and here my opponent draws a, a character card. So I don't know why they're drawing a character card after all of that. Are they trying to hurt the fellowship or are they trying to draw into Nazgul um, uh, Nazgul are abroad ring wraiths are abroad or um, the black captain commands maybe but then why didn't you do that earlier I, I don't understand I don't understand what happened with that card draw um, I go ahead and move the fellowship here and you know, I have to be making some progress with the fellowship. I think it probably would have been better to to have Gandalf um, available to be able to move in. But all right, so I draw Shelob first off. You know, that's pretty much how the hunt has been going. So um, you know, and then I get a three, which you know, okay. Um, it's effectively a two reveal because I'm using Gollum's ability and that's that. My opponent uses a ring to move Nazgul and then attacks Helm's Deep. So I play Daring Defiance, obviously, because there's probably going to be some nasty strategy card. Cancel it, um, but my opponent still gets two sixes. So, you know, that's not great for me. And I get zero hits, which is horrible. Right. If I had done, if I had done, my opponent gets slightly above average, and if I had done what we would expect, which is two hits, then this battle would have been much more balanced. But it didn't go that way. Um, so my opponent presses, and then they play desperate battle, and I, I don't know. I, maybe I should have saved. I was worried they had another Deadly Strife. Um, so I played this other Daring Defiance. And that was probably a mistake. I probably just had to, to risk it. And then I could have played something like um, Ents Rage and gotten three hits, prob you know, presumably. And... And then at the start of next round, move, move Daring to find, you know, we prove the Swifter in there. Um, so that's tricky. I don't know what I should have done there. Um, my opponent would have gotten two hits, but instead they get one hit and I get one hit. So... Yeah. These were some, these were really some interesting combat choices. I probably needed to hope that the battle just tilted my way, you know, play enter age there and then hope the battle tilts my way and then use daring defiance or use, we prove the swifter to really just completely seal the deal and let Helm's deep live. And then it becomes quite tricky for my opponent to find two more victory points. I mean, maybe Edoras, maybe the Shire, but they're, they're, you know, pretty far away. It's, it's not obvious. And then maybe the fellowship has enough time. So even in this, even at this point, I had, I had some chances. All right. So that happens. And then I draw a shield wall and it is a gift. Obviously it'd be great to get heroic death at some point, but this is, this is going to fall. 
and then I roll this without enough musters. You know, if I had rolled a couple musters and maybe a, you know, army movement or something like that, then maybe I could attack into here. But the game is basically the game is basically over at this point. So I I draw a character card hoping to get heroic death or something. I don't know. There's there's nothing there's nothing that's going to save me. My opponent plays Morgul Wound, doesn't really matter, and then just uh, has a reinforcement card and then defeats Helm's Deep. So there were a lot of things that I did wrong there. I think that combat in Helm's Deep, I could have played differently to, to just play for my outs and hope that they hope that they live so that I can get Gandalf in there in the end. And I think not getting into Mordor the turn that I could have and most egregiously playing the scouts in a completely useless way as opposed to playing it in a incredibly useful way in Rohan. So that's the game. If you have any feedback or thoughts, I'd love to hear it. Thanks for watching, and um, I'll continue to do more videos. If you have suggestions on games I should cover or strategy tips that you'd like to see, just let me know. Thanks. Oh, let's look at statistics. Here are... Here are the statistics. So remember that um, in the replay, the shadow, for some reason, the, the shadow dice are reversed from the free people's dice. So um, I was actually minus three and minus four on, on fives and sixes, and shadow was um, plus two on sixes. So I felt that. Um, I was also minus two on Wills of the West. It took a long time to get my, my first Will of the West. So, you know, the, just, sometimes the, strata, the the luck tilts a little bit against you, and that's fine. You know, I, I, think, I think that's totally fine. That's part of the game. I don't think these numbers are so extreme. I think that you can see my choices around when to play the combat cards, when to play scouts, when to go into Mordor, when to lose Strider, to go into Moria. I mean, I lost three... I, I got three extra tiles drawn by choosing to go through Moria. And while I think that the, the odds of that were relatively low, that was absolutely a choice I made. So, you know, I think people often can complain about the luck. And sure, there is luck in the game, but I think the the tactical and strategic choices that players make during the game plays a much larger role than than luck in, in most cases. You know, yeah, there was a little bit of luck here, but um, I easily could have made it a much closer game. This, this wasn't this wasn't particularly close, but I could have made it much closer through some some different choices. So the number one thing I'd be curious to hear about from people, would you go through Moria? And um, I look forward to any other comments. Thanks so much.